Chicago Bulls under the new direction of Stan Albeck, of course, a very successful coach in the NBA with Cleveland, San Antonio, New Jersey. Also, they have a new addition, a name you certainly know a great deal about. George Gervin has come over in a trade, so uh, some new faces here. Well, Gervin's going to be an interesting addition. Right now, they're planning on playing him in a three-man rotation with the great Michael Jordan and Kyle Macy, who they picked up in a trade also. But it's difficult to bring new faces in and meld them in effectively early in the season. So it may take a little while before we see the old George Gervin. For a while, we may see an old George Gervin. Difference, Tom, we'll see tonight in a Stan Albeck-led club? Well, Stan really likes to uh, get the big guys involved in the game, and they've gone very heavily for some bigger bodies this year. They do like to run. Stan's always been um, an advocate of the running game, and I think you're going to see him getting out and trying to get the ball in Jordan's hand all the time. One other question in Chicago is, can Michael Jordan top last year? Is that, is that possible? I don't know. You know, there's a lot of theories going around the league right now that the coach is going to have to bear down on uh, Michael Jordan because if they let him go uh, too free, as he was kind of given a free hand last year, then maybe uh, it'll be Air Jordan all year long, but you won't really have a winning club. He's going to have to meld into um, a winning team down here in Chicago. Be interesting to see how Stan Albeck is able to maybe put the harness a little bit on Michael Jordan. Well, and now the starting lineup for tonight's game. At forward, 6'6", six, six from Notre Dame, number 7, Kelly Kapuka. At forward, 6'9", from Detroit, number 23, Earl Curitan. And center, from Notre Dame, 6'11", number 40, Bill Lambeer. And guard from Baylor, 6-2, number 15, Vinny Johnson. From Indiana, 6-1 guard, number 11, Isaiah Thomas. And now, the starting lineup for tonight's game. At forward, from Notre Dame, number 0. Number 21, Sidney Green. A former number one draft pick who has still not quite lived up to the early promises. In the middle from Seattle, number 33, Joan Oldham. Over 48 minutes, he was the second leading shot blocker in the NBA last year. Three from Kentucky, number 24, Kyle Macy. Signed an offer sheet with the Bulls, and Phoenix wound up making a trade to get and him guard here. from North Carolina, number 23, Michael Jordan. Some say he's already a multi-million dollar corporation. Orlando Woolridge, Sidney Green up front, Jawan Oldham the center, Kyle Macy, and of course Jordan. Paul Mahalik on your right, and Mike Mathis officiating tonight's ball game. game. He averaged six a game. Mark Eaton had seven blocks a game over a 48-minute span. These clubs played it very close, as you can see. Pistons won one ball game on this floor, lost another in overtime, lost yet another in regulation by one point. Bulls lead the all-time series with ease, but obviously the Pistons have gained some ground the last three years. Earl Curitan against Oldham. One by Chicago. Woolridge content to wait for the pattern to develop. Jordan got away from Vinnie Johnson and scored. Seems to hang up in the air forever. Gave an open lane to the bucket. Isaiah had the bad pass stolen by Macy. Jordan a great dish off. Sidney Green was fouled by Lane. Stan Albeck came over to the Bulls. One of his Score. theories was that Jordan could be a point guard. In fact, Jordan can be just about anything he wants to be. Still belongs to the Pistons. The Pistons may have gotten a break there. It was tipped. It looked like it might have gone off of Kapuka's fingers last. And Pistons trying to force some passes instead of making the easy one. Oh, finally looping it out to Isaiah. He'll try a 20-footer. Good. 11-8. Isaiah helped out. Jordan tried to knock in the three-point opportunity. Jordan, of course, knows that and adjusts, draws a lot of fouls from his defense. Vinny Johnson giving up a lot. In addition to making uh, well over 600000 for the Bulls, Jordan has a contract with the Nike Shoe Company that pays him close to half a million a year. In fact, his Air Jordan shoes last year grossed about $70 million. 
Many handed block. I guarantee you, Chuck Daly would love to have that from him all season long. This is with 10 to put it up. Good pass by Zan. A little while, I think. Uh, it's going to be difficult for him because he's not playing with anybody. Until Cartwright gets back and the possibility of Bernard King's return, it's going to be very lonely for him out there on the floor. Woolridge. Oldham with a hook pass. Jordan. 21 11. Chicago's open a 10 point lead. Isaiah got it right back, though. Good choice by Isaiah. Woolridge off balance. Oldham with a rebound, though. Stolen by Isaiah. He beat three. Macy tries to cut him off. Isaiah scores. I'm sure we're going to get a look at Charles Oakley, the rookie out of Virginia Union. In fact, here he comes on the floor. 6'9, 245, and he is really put together. He's a big kid. Has a little trouble with the shot. Exactly. Oakley. Isaiah helping out. That's why he's not much of a shooter. Get the women and children out of the way. Long lead pass to Vinny. Working against Macy. Puts it up and hits it. Macy spun away from the Isaiah attempted a steal. Should have a jump ball. But it'll be Mahorn in Oakland. Hey, that's a heck of a match. You've got two <laughs> bruisers out there. Be interesting to watch how ice plays out here as we see the, the jump ball coming. Ricky Mahorn not used to playing against people his size. It is for Ricky not to pick up the cheap fouls. When you're going to get them, make sure that they count and make sure somebody scrapes some uh, skin off his arm as he picks himself up. Something like that. Orzain has been the recipient of a lot of boos and catcalls in this town the last couple of years. Even though he played his college and high school basketball in this area. Isaiah with a great steal. McKinney will never catch him. Isaiah. That's a little move Isaiah puts on. at the power game with the great slam dunks. McKinney tried to act into, into a foul, and Isaiah calmly kisses the glass with a 35 32 Pistons lead. Jordan lost Tony Campbell. We got a foul out front. One of the tough things to learn is when to and when not to foul. That time Tony was too late getting there. You've got to put your hands back in your pocket. If you don't have a real chance at bothering the shot, you're not going to accomplish much. Tony Campbell came over and asked Chuck Daly where was the foul. Chuck's off to make a column on my Tried sheet. Tried for the rebound. Kent pulling down Gervin. McKinney with another foul. And Billy's in a lot of trouble out there. There's not much of him. He's got good quickness. The piston guard just taking him inside. And Joe Dumars does not let the quickness of the opposing guards bother him. He has good quickness himself. And he's so strong up top that he just fends them off with the upper body. This is McKinney's sixth NBA team. As I had mentioned, he was retired from basketball. Was working for a sports equipment company in the Chicago area. And the call went out to him because, frankly, the Bulls were uh, devoid of point guards. Even though they had cut Wes Matthews and traded Enos Watley. Oakley and Jordan have a bet this year of $20 a game that if Oakley at least plays 20 minutes per night, that Oakley will out rebound Michael. Michael says, no, I'll still win the rebounding battle. Oakley would if they'd bet a dinner. <laughs> Dumars is on Jordan. Oakley set a pick, so Benson picks up Jordan. Durbin with long all over him, five on the shot clock. Oakley tipped in his own miss. Benson cut off by Corzine. Campbell got inside Jordan. Michael swiped it. Now it's showtime. Let's stop the ball. Durbin goes in free. Nobody even challenged him. Pistons lead by one. That turns the crowd up. In case you notice something new about the Chicago Stadium, it's a brand new multi-million dollar scoreboard with the message board in between. Also auxiliary scoreboards around the arena. One of which says Boston 45, Cleveland 44 in the second quarter. It's a great building though, much like the old Olympia. A lot of, really not a bad seat in the house, especially for hockey. Uh, you wonder why. Dumars nearly walked, puts up the long J and hits it. Dumars with his first field goal. That's he has four points. That's important for Joe Dumars' confidence. Last night seemed a little bit tentative on his shots. 
Gervin with an ugly hook shot. The uh, Michael Jordan endorsements. He receives $100,000 a year, believe it or not, to wear the brand the knee brace that he wears. Money makes money, huh? It's going to work just as well. Playing beer with five. 51 43. Pistons with an eight point lead. Sydney Green, pretty pass by Jordan. There's the penetration that you're talking about. Long had the shot, passed it up for a shorter one, missed it. And John, in his exuberance to get the basketball back, went over the back of Jordan. First foul on John, but the Pistons are now over the limit with 3.56 to play till halftime. If you're defending John, you want to see him put the ball on the floor. He's such a deadly outside shooter when he has time to stand there, square up to the basket, and rock and shoot. There you see the graphic on George Gervin moving in the seventh place over 25,000 points on the all time NBA list headed of course by Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Somehow Rick Barry's uh, ego was probably uh, damaged a little bit there you think. Rick still has an ego doesn't he Tom. Oh it's uh, <laughs> fairly legendary around the <laughs> NBA. But he did a lot of things to give himself a big ego. To, yes. to deserve it. Oh yeah, he was, what a he great was quite team. a player. 16 for Orlando. This is lead is three. Or it's gonna have to adjust their defense on him. He's hit too many now. He's proven that he can do it. Isaiah calmly nets it. He has 14. He's better now than his entire point output of a night ago. This is with a cheap foul, Isaiah Jordan. And on page 111 of your Hoop Magazine program. And if your copy has David Corzine's autograph, then you're the winner of the Bulls Fan Club membership. Take your program to the Budweiser Hoop Center in the East End at the main level near gate six and a half to play the cross. Back to how he gets along with his players, which obviously is exceptionally well. And it's got to be for the good of the team. Chuck, one of the things I'm sure he told Isaiah in that timeout was try and keep your hands in your pockets for the next two minutes and 18 seconds. He got into foul trouble last night, ultimately fouling out of the game with a couple minutes to go. Pistons need him too desperately down the stretch. He has those two personal fouls. The Pistons with a lead of three. Jordan with a steal. Back on the floor, though, this time. Coming with less than two minutes to play in the half. Sydney Green. In the second quarter. Jordan. Head fake on Vinnie Jackson. And he's Jordan with 13. The horn with an offensive board. Oh. Should have been a foul call there. Now we got a jump ball. I'll tell you, you can hear the hand slap against the arm. And no call for the Bulls to shoot an excess of five on the game clock. Jordan working on Vinny. Isaiah helped out. And Johnson picked up the puck. You can keep a guy outside that uh, circle behind the free throw line. You want to let him shoot. You want to bother the shot, but you sure don't want to pick up the foul that far out. Jordan now eight of nine from the strike tonight. Pistons with plenty of time on their final possession. He hit them both. Jordan with 15. Lambs maybe lost control of the uh, clock that time. So the Pistons trail 60 59 in intermission. Stay with us. We'll have a chat with Chuck Daly and our trivia contest winner when we come back. Foul. But it wasn't called. Isaiah thought about shooting. Instead, threw the air and pass, and Jordan got the steal. He's got to break that time. Vinny off balance. He traveled. Good call. Good defense by the Bulls. Pistons looking to bump the lead to four. They led by six in the first half. Isaiah lost Macy again. Out of bounds to Detroit. Technique you'll ever see. No, didn't scare Woolridge. Isaiah, though, practically the other end. Isaiah with 18. Pistons lead by four, 70-66. Jordan walked, and they finally call him. Uh, I think Michael was 
surprised that he was covered. He turned around. Trapuca was right there in his jock. Pulled the ball back, and that's what caused the, uh, the uh, travel. Pistons isolate for Isaiah against Macy. Jordan helps out. Somebody's got to be open. It's Kelly. 18-footer. Good! Pistons a much better club than uh, Chicago. Much better personnel. It's really important to jump on them early. You don't want them to have a feeling that they can beat you. Especially on their floor. Isaiah with 20. Pistons have inched that lead to eight. That's their largest. Michael used his head for that assist. Porzine now. But Isaiah with a magical move of his own. He's got 22. Uh, Stan Albeck's going to have to look at getting somebody off the bench to take Kyle Macy's place. Pistons keep running a one-man game over there. The big people. Kelly working against his former Fighting Irish teammate. Missed the shot. What do we got? Loose ball foul against the guys in blue. Lane Beer picked it up. Billy Barking getting close to a technical foul if he's not careful. And Mike Mathis says, you weren't careful enough. That'll inspire the crowd. A technical foul on Lane Beer. Have to see that again. Really known for pushing off a little bit in his career. And Dave Corzine did move quickly out of bounds. Now watch Lamb Beer right here. The left arm. There, there was enough contact there that it could be a justifiable foul call. Bulls only 5 of 15 from the floor, adding up to the 33% figure for the third quarter. Pistons 6 of 9 for their percentage. Macy was left open. He nailed it. That's a good play for the Bulls. Everyone's so conscious of Jordan. They had to double up on it. When they did, it leaves Macy alone. Can't give Macy a sunshine. Isaiah takes Macy to the hole, missed the shot. Lambeer missed the putback. And a double dose of trouble because Lambeer picked up his fourth foul on the play. Defensive play of the night right there. Mahorn had two registered. Jordan, wide open. Uh, Pistons may need a timeout. Close. Pistons need to stop the action here and regroup. Kelly, good dish off to Curitan, blocked by Jordan. Trapuca with his ninth point, looking for 10. Chicago, I'm sure, remembers that 56-point onslaught at the Silverdome. Well, during that last flurry, Rick Mahorn caught an elbow or a forearm, something in the mouth. Tended to during the timeout by Piston trainer Mike Abdenauer. Rick checking to make sure all the... Uh, Incisors are in place. Apparently there are. He's okay. Scorer's table. Bill Lambeer has three personal fouls, not four, and they've given one of those to Earl Curitan, who has four. Because that's when they can trigger the running game. When they can run um, at least every three times. Gervin fires. Nope. Rebound. Good shooting from 10 feet and closer. Long to the hole. Off balance. Put it down. He's fouled. How about that for John? Gervin. Long did a good job defensively, and Iceman missed it. Mahorn on the rebound, outletting to Isaiah. Two on three with Long on his right. Isaiah flips it up, and Blair Benson holds it down. There you go, Benny. Five seconds to shoot. Game clock with nine seconds showing. Thorzine, a turnaround, blocked by Mahorn with three seconds to play in the quarter. Quarters of 30, 30, and 26. So the Pistons outscored him by three in that third stanza. Kent Benson with 12 boards in the ball game to go with his eight points. He leads the Pistons in that rebounding department. Joe Dumars starts the third quarter, as does Tony Campbell in the lineup. Mahorn and Benson, the other front court guys, and Jordan scores. The Pistons have to be fearful as of him exploding in the final quarter. Benny Johnson nails it. He can hold him. No goaltender. Bulls looking to go in front. Good pass to Banks. Oh, my. Michael Jordan with a magic pass. Boy, he made that play. Gene Banks wasn't even going to go to the hole. Michael put the ball out there and made him go to the basket. Irvin Johnson couldn't have done it any better. Benson's second foul. Lambeer back on the floor. Mahorn will sit down. Again, Lambeer with three personal fouls, not four. Lambeer will go the rest of the way for the Pistons. They'd like to buy another minute or two for Isaiah. You can't let Chicago get too big of a lead. 
Gervin might have tippy toed, no call. William Beer spots Campbell. Nearly had it poked away in a triple team, out of bounds to Chicago. Joe Lambert a little frustrated out there tonight. Dumars just never saw him coming. Here comes Jordan. Look out. Kyle Macy made that play. Costly, costly turn. Lambier, though, good anticipation. Uh, Oldham didn't screen him off. Dumars to the hole, block by. Here comes Jordan. Timeout. They're coming unglued. They need a timeout badly. Finally, it's called a 20-second timeout. But the house is coming down. It's 96-90. That's what they bought the tickets for to see that. This is a very noisy building when the home team is doing Chicago well. lead and possession. Michael Jordan has been on the court forever. He's used to running 40, 45 minutes a night. Olam gets it to Jordan. Curitan helped out. Great weak side help from Curitan on the shot block. 96-91, 8.20 to play in the ball game. Vinny Johnson, good crossover move. Lost Macy, put it down, he's fouled. Whoever Kyle Macy is on, that's who the Pistons need to get the ball to. Vinny Johnson is just so strong that Kyle's going to have to resort to slapping him to stay with him. You can't slap Vinny Johnson and stop his shot. Macy doesn't have a chance against Isaiah working against Jordan now. Gervin missed it. Four of the five Pistons starters in there. It's Tony Campbell in place of Trapuca and a three-point shot by Mason. The free throw line, you cannot give time to set up. Isaiah triple team. That leaves Curitan. Good night. Curitan with five. Seven minutes to play. Gervin. That one dropped home. Played by Oldham. One more and he's gone. Campbell's open. Fires. Good. Tony Campbell with a clutch jam. Lambeer set the pick. Isaiah weaves. He was fouled. It should be Oldham. He's Gonzo. Sixth foul on Oldham. That'll bring Corzine in, and that'll certainly help the Pistons on the offensive end of the floor. Woolridge set the pick. Jordan lost. Vinny Johnson, foul. and Lambeer just fired at Jordan. Michael doesn't like it. And now Woolridge is telling Lambeer to get away. Stan Albeck. Losing his cool, comes charging across the floor. Daly says, Stan, get on, on your chair. And now Daly and Albeck. How do you like this? When do you ever see this? Chuck Daly wants a piece of Stan Albeck. And now Vinny Johnson. Stan Albeck had no business being on the other end of the floor, even though he's protecting the superstar. And Daly said, get out of my end of the floor. Now the crowd is wild. Jordan's got to know if he's going to the hole, sometimes he's got to pay for it. Superstars don't get everything. And now Albeck has lost total control. I think they're throwing both coaches out of the game right now. That's Stan is really decision. upset. Well, that's kind of unprecedented. I've never seen that happen in an NBA game before. So it happened at a Red Wings game last year when Nick Polano He's going at it with one of the coaches. Both of them are gone. You think Chuck doesn't want this ball game? Well, Chuck's a little upset. You know, Stan Albeck came all the way down to the opposite free throw line. You really can't do that. You're not allowed in that territory. Stan, of course, is very emotional. Wanted to protect his player. But it was a good foul by Lambier. It was the smart foul, the correct foul. Absolutely. Don't give a guy the paint, particularly late in the game. It wasn't malicious. He just put him down to the floorboard. Daly greeted with booze. Now an interesting uh, decision here whether or not there will be a technical foul assessed. Well, so Dick that. Carter will handle the coaching chores. And Stan Albeck, the diminutive sort, greeted with a standing ovation as he heads off the floor. Stan's not the type you'd actually uh, expect to take on any coach in the NBA or anybody. I tell you, last year we saw this in a game. We stand leading the cheer. He's waving his arms like a drunken fighter. <laughs> He's he still alive. Yeah. Last year the Pistons got into a situation like this where there was a fight between Juwan Oldham and Bill Lambeer right here on this court. 
Pistons with a commanding lead, and it turned it all around. Chicago went on to win the game. Jordan here, you'll see, will have the baseline. Takes it. Now Lambeer puts him down hard. It's a physical foul. No question about it. Very physical foul. Lambeer using the left arm to throw Michael down. But the point is, you see that often enough in the NBA that it's not as if he took a shot at him. And Albeck came charging down, and that's when Daly and Albeck began exchanging words, and Stan may have said something to Chuck, and then Daly just wanted a piece of it. I think Stan went, reached out and pushed Chuck, and you know, we all have our own um, individual space. We don't want violated and uh, touch Daddy Rich's clothes. <laughs> and Chuck really, really got upset. This is going to be a wild ending to this game. The emotion definitely on Chicago's side with these fans going crazy. And what could be a seven-point lead for the Bulls. Dick Carter will now coach the Pistons. Not sure if it'll be uh, Tex Winter or whom on the Chicago end of the floor. Don't know whom's down there. They've got three assistants. Well, Tex gets the opportunity to kneel and look like the coach. Winner is the guy that coached at Northwestern from 73 to 78. They also have Murray Arnold and Mike Tebow. So I believe it would be winner. Jordan bangs them both down. 105-98. Lambeer. Travel. Oh. Billy tried to act his way into a foul there and it wound up moving his pivot foot. Very emotional situation. Both coaches have been ejected. Jordan to the hole. Look out. Had it stripped, though, by Curitan, but Earl fouled him. Fouled. Jordan hits his third in a row from there. In fact, he's at 12 of 13 tonight. 27 for Jordan. Vinny Johnson got a pick from Lambeer. He hit it. Vinny rattled the iron. He has 16. 107-100. Isaiah working against Jordan on a clear out. Jordan scores. Michael posting up the much smaller Isaiah Thomas. Jordan with 29. Isaiah wants it back. He was fouled by Macy. Isaiah comes back hitting a pair after... Woolridge short. What do we got? Loose ball foul against Chicago. It's Jordan. Well, Michael was wrapping up Isaiah down there. A lot of ego involved in this game. You have two superstars, Jordan and Thomas, neither of whom want to be embarrassed, both of whom want to win this game for their team. One oh nine one oh four taking away that left side Woolridge from 14 missed again terribly Lambeer staying on his tiptoes to clean off that rebound Pistons can draw within three Lambeer tries to do it he does banks it home. Isaiah here comes a two on three rush Isaiah carried a good call by Mathis yes it was yes it was Chicago's gone a little Isaiah's cold Isaiah's not here. hit with that violation very often but Mathis was right there to make the call well Michael cut across his path as he did, Isaiah just picked the ball up a little higher and turned it over. Chuck Daly and Stan Albeck came very, very close to uh, exchanging blows. Both have been ejected. And a wild ball game. Call to it. Back to Macy. Vinny came flying at him. Woolridge, good team defense. Ball was kicked, I believe. But it's going to be a loose ball foul against Chicago. Macy. That'll send Thomas back to the foul line. Boy, the Pistons adjusted very well defensively that time. He's been a busy guy at the charity stripe tonight. Hits his 16th free throw. 3.15 to play. Jordan goes through three Pistons. Stops, pops, and hits. A shooter's touch that guy has. 30 for Jordan. What a battle he and Isaiah have had. Lambeer fires. Go! Bill Lambeer with a clutch J. Uh, Bulls need five on the shot clock. Corzine lost it. Jordan saves it with three on the shot clock. Missed it. Corzine follows. He was fouled. He'll go to the strike. 
Pistons nearly had the 24 second violation against the Bulls, but Jordan worked free for the shot. Corzine was able to follow. That's the fourth foul on Lambert. Corzine has six. Chicago regains the lead. Isaiah leads it for Lambert. 10 seconds in the shot clock. Jordan is picked up by Isaiah on the switch. Vinny Johnson was free. Not much time to shoot now. Isaiah Hook put it in! A left-handed hook! He travels, as we said he does invariably on that first step. We are in trouble. Woolridge missed it, though. Bulls by one, 115 to play. Isaiah was fouled in traffic. With the game on the line, and if he senses he's got a bit of a mismatch, which he certainly does with Macy, and the way he's shooting free throws tonight, you can look for him to go to the hole quite a bit in the final minute 13. Three times. <laughs> Isaiah and Vinny have taken turns going at him. His career high, in case you're interested, 47 points straight up. Terrible call. Influenced by the home crowd, maybe. Jordan, triple team, stolen by Benson. Lambeer saves it. Vinny Johnson has it with 30 seconds to play. Pistons with a chance to go in front. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Benson set to pick. Isaiah doesn't use it. Final 20 seconds to play. Isaiah dribbled off his own shoe. He's in trouble. Out of bounds. A foul, though. Jordan pleading his case. Mathis not listening. Foul number five on Jordan. Isaiah to the strike. What a game. Michael knocked the ball away cleanly there. Uh, no reason for a foul. He's in good shape. Michael swings down on him because the 24 was working his way down. I think Isaiah doesn't relish the chance to go one on one with Jordan. Isaiah now 10 of 13 for the line in this quarter alone. This he has 36 points. Big shot by Isaiah because this puts the pressure on Chicago. If he misses, there is none. Benson tried for the rebound. What do we got? Should have a jump ball. Hopefully that's it. Sidney Green kept the cool head. So did Benson. 119-117. Nope. Pistons already had the play call. They're ready to go. This is it. Clear out for Isaiah. Working against Jordan. Six seconds. Fade away. Tough shot. Missed it. Lambeer was fouled. He'll go to the strike. That's a big break. Boy, that sure was. Pistons really with no shot. Isaiah off balance. No play set up. Michael Jordan kept Isaiah from penetrating. And Beard just wanted it more. Two nope. seconds to play. No way should he have gotten this ball. Great play by Lambeer. A lot of pressure on these shots. Philly is one of three tonight. He's got the entire house howling. And One's down. 119, 118. We're going to try and freeze Lambeer right now by calling the timeout. What was the game? Now, with a wealth of talent that keeps come pouring out of the uh, collegiate level the last decade, the NBA in a great resurgence. Well, it all comes down to this shot. The ball's very heavy right now. Pistons probably as confident with Lambeer at the line as anybody else on the floor. The crowd's going to be into it right now. A lot of waving, things to disturb his concentration. Should he miss, Pistons need to foul immediately. They're going to try and freeze him again, Fred. Using up all their timeouts right now, Chicago is. Much like a um, field goal kicker in football. We saw Bo Schimbeckler do that against Iowa just a week ago. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Lambeer certainly had uh, plenty of time to think about this free throw. Well, he has. The idea is to let him cool off. You know, when you're playing, you're in a rhythm. You want to get the ball and you want to shoot it, particularly after you've made the first one. That's the tough one. So it's good timeouts, good strategy. Again, should he miss this second free throw, if the Pistons foul immediately, there'll still be one second left on the clock, and they would have a chance. Bull, of course, the bull strategy would be to uh, go down and miss the free throws. The clock then starts running on the miss, and the Pistons have one second to throw at the length of the court. But 
really right now it comes down to whether or not Lambeer makes this one shot to see whether the Pistons have a shot at going into overtime. That's the scenario that Dick Carter would prefer. Last night Lambeer was perfect. to play there was a foul or is that it loose ball foul but I believe time is elapsed the Chicago Bulls have won it and I'll tell you what the two timeouts may have worked Lambeer just pulled the string the Bulls beat the Pistons twice on this floor last year once in overtime once by a point Jordan for a sheer show here. These are the free throws you love to shoot. Now he hands it up left-handed. And they win. Chicago Bulls act like they just won the NBA championship. 121-118 Chicago. Crowd fired up on a Saturday night. They love it. We'll be back to wrap it up. Pistons in a heartbreaking defeat. Stay with us. Had some great rivalries over the years with the Pistons. Last year, the two clubs split three and three. And we believe we've got one of the most exciting players in the league in Michael Jordan. Of course, I believe you've got one of the best point guards in Isaiah. Yeah, we really do. He's one of those gifted players, as is Jordan. And they're a delight to watch. Uh, I get the feeling, and probably you feel the same way. I know when I was with Philadelphia, you'd sit there every night and watch Julius. You'd say, you know, you may never see these things done again. And uh, people, uh, people have to come and see him because they are truly gifted people.